Welcome to the Global Bible Study, brought to you by the World Christianity from Brazil Adventist University. In this episode, we talk about prayer power, asking God to help people. Jesus' followers do not ask God to bless the alone. They felt the need to pray for others, so they ask God for the power that Jesus promised them. Hello, in this episode, Pastor Roberto Passos, a master's student in missiology at Brazil Adventist University, is my co-host. And to discuss about the power of prayer and how important it is to intercede for others, we welcome Dr. Johnny Manassian, an Armenian-Iranian pastor, a Cypriot theology student that we're going to call Gustavo Silva, and Valentina Orderli, a Serbia graduate in theology, holds a Master in Intercultural Studies in Hungary. This is our fourth episode. We have been discussing about making friends for God with people from many countries. We're happy that you're joining us for this uh, episode. Uh, during this pandemic, research shows that never have people searched so much for prayer on Google as now. So let me begin by asking uh, Valentina, uh, what is so special about prayer? How do you see uh, prayer as part of one's personal spiritual life? Well, I believe that prayer is um, really not as much as about God, but as about us trying to reach out to Him uh, and connect with Him. Uh, and, you know, trying to keep this relationship up with Him day by day. Um, and, uh, you know, he needs us to, to in enable him to act in our lives. And he, we have to say this out loud to him and, you know, in front of the whole universe. Um, and this is, this is a way, one of the ways I believe that we communicate with him. Now, the study guide says that we also must ask God to save people. You know, we, that's something common in prayer when we mention other people. And uh, we must ask God to give us wisdom to know how to also bring people into his kingdom. Uh, how do we do that? Uh, Gustavo, any thoughts about uh, prayer, intercessory prayer, prayer about other people? We usually use God as a genie. So we have, we see God like, most of us have watched the movie Aladdin. And he has a genie, whenever he needs something, he asks for it. Unfortunately, many times during our lives, when we sit down or, and we kneel before him, it's usually for asking something from him. Usually when we need something, then we remember of God. And unfortunately, this is one of the biggest problems in Europe, as I see it, because Many say, we don't need anything, so we don't need God. But first, we should be thanking Him for everything we have. By beginning, when we wake up in the morning, we can see we have the gift of life itself that comes from Him. So, I thank God every day for being alive and even if sometimes we do pray, we, we should wait for the response that what's best in our lives from his point of view, instead of what we want. And we just simply should ask, give us what you think is best with our lives and for our lives. You know, I'm thinking, uh, and I wanted to ask Dr. Johnny, because the study guide talks about the spiritual war where we find ourselves in. And 
and the the way God respects our free choice. He will never force anyone to do anything, and maybe that tells us something about the way we should approach other people as we talk about God. Is that uh, do you agree with that, Dr. Johnny? Uh, in the Islamic uh, daily prayer that they have to pray five times, one mm -hmm. sentence says, "Those shall live who pray." Mm -hmm. Those shall live who pray. So prayer is a very basic element in the Islamic religion, and uh, when we pray, they also respect our prayer. I remember when I was drafted to, to the military service and we had uh, barracks of 20 soldiers as soon as i would kneel down next to my bed to pray there would be absolute silence among the other 19 soldiers because they saw that i am praying they respected prayer so it seems that uh, somebody who wants to talk to muslims about god should have a prayerful life, yes? Exactly, right. And they respect your prayers. Not only they expect people to respect their prayers, but they respect your prayer when they see your praying. And Valentina, and how does the fact that we pray for another people show our interest in another people's relationship with God? How much does it cost to pray? Well, yeah, obviously it doesn't cost anything to pray, uh, but what it does require is for us to care and for us to kind of have this, um, you know, determination in our hearts to like to think about other people because it's so easy to say, um, don't worry, sister or brother, don't worry, so and so, uh, I'll pray for you and you should pray to God and, you know, keep praying. And then we go home, pray once, and forget about it. Does it happen to us? It does. Uh, so it really requires, you know, from from our hearts that this care for other people. And I think this is this is why um, Jesus finds it important. And we can see how he's been in, you know, other apostles also were praying and interceding for each other in the Bible, um, because it it is also making building our relationships stronger with each other and with God. Uh, when we think about not only ourselves but about other people um and you know sometimes the question comes that you know um it's our it's we have the free will they have the free will and god is not going to change that or or you know make them like make them do something that they don't want to so then why pray why ask um what does what do we have to do with it if they have their own choice um but i believe that things how work in the world in the universe and in this battle of good and evil things are much more difficult than that uh, and these prayers really do matter and they don't just go out in the air uh, they do matter and they have importance and we can know these things from experience I believe in all of us in our lives how much um, prayers matter by the, no, by the way uh, the yeah. Muslims appreciate our style of prayer because as sister white says Prayer is opening to God and talking to him as though you're talking to a friend. Whereas there's these cliched statements that they repeat. <laughs> so it's good that through our prayer life, we can also witness. Yes. Yeah, I mean, if I can just add to this, uh, I think it's not only Muslims, but we can see um, other Christian religions as well, that they, they really have these pre-learned prayers that they use. And then when they hear us pray, uh, they just really find it interesting and surprised. And, you know, like, is it possible? Like, can you just talk to God like a friend? Um, so I, I agree with that. It is a witnessing when other people hear us pray. Yeah. Gustavo, uh, how about praying with other people? When they, they experience us praying with them, you know, especially people from different uh, religious orientations what kind of effect can that have in their lives i think this is probably the most beautiful thing amongst people is usually when you have a different denomination or when you have a different religion 
people enter in kind of a defensive mode. But no matter of which country, which religion you come from, you really find it hard when you ask somebody, let's pray together. You really find it unique if somebody says no. They usually accept it. For example, we went to the hospital because we had a member who, who was there. And when we finished the visit, and they knew that we are not Orthodox. So when we asked them, can we all sit and join together for a prayer? Everybody said yes. So I think this is an opening into bringing people closer to God. And, and I believe that God even um, will take advantage, so to say, of those opportunities to actually answer those prayers and, and bless the people and make an impression on them, you know, and make them realize that, yes, there is a God out there who cares about them and uh, on in which them they can they can rely on for their the issues of their lives yeah absolutely I believe, I believe that Jesus is our big example and you see, for me one of the more powerful chapters in the Bible is John chapter 17 when I read this chapter the first time I see Jesus pray for his disciples and pray for like me the people who know the, the gospel through his disciples when you see this example Dr. John, you are everyone. And how you can see this powerful pray that Jesus in salvation for another people? How you can feel when we are in the the the, in the the middle of the battle, in the middle of the war? How you can see this example for the pray for salvation for another that Jesus gave for us? Well, what we can see in Jesus' prayers is that he would you know pray for the disciples pray for them even though he knew that um they are they're not praying for him that they're not staying with him that you know they're gonna reject him uh, he would you know pray for his enemies on the cross um even though they they weren't they would would have you know they they killed him um we can see something really really special example from jesus that's really um kind of hard for us to follow because we can pray for our family, um, but then how do we pray for someone who doesn't really like us and the, someone who actually hates us and tries to do everything to destroy us? Um, but, the, but the Bible teaches us to, to do this and uh, to actually, you know, not just forgive these people, but to care enough for them to pray for them and to keep Perfect. praying for them. Um, so I think this requires us to really into ourselves and our hearts and ask ourselves um, are we able to pray um, for, for others um, and then also are we able to pray for ourselves uh, in certain situations because like I've had a friend once and um, uh, she said there are issues with my relationship with God and I can pray for everyone around me but I've been not be able to pray for myself for weeks um, and I, I think that's also also a struggle uh, to to find a way and to, to stay strong enough uh, and believe in God um, because you know if we, if we lose the faith and we can't pray for ourselves maybe soon enough we won't be able to pray for anyone either because our prayer life with God is just becoming weaker and weaker um, so it's important I think both ways um, ourselves and and everyone around us just to remember what uh... Uh, Roberto was mentioning uh, in John chapter 17, verse 20, uh, we read, My prayer, this is Jesus saying, My prayer is not for them alone, the disciples. I pray also for those who will believe in me through their message, that all of them may be one, Father, just as you are in me and I am in you. So it's beautiful that Jesus way back he has uh, pray, prayed for those who will believe in him that means those who are not his disciples yet dr johnny that, that, tell us that, a, an experience that you have had with praying with muslims and uh, your your um friendship with them that verse is the most precious in jesus prayer because it includes you 
and me. That's that right. He in his prayer included all the future uh, converts to Jesus and accepting him as personal savior. Do you remember any prayer that uh, was answered in a special way, Dr. Johnny? There are many, many like that in our day in our daily life. Not necessarily to quote biblical examples, but the Lord has opened pray uh, answered prayers of healing, and uh, it's precious to know that He does answer prayers of healing. Yes. Gustavo, how about in your life? Has God been answering your prayers? Yes, time after time. I have lost the count of how many prayers he has answered. And to be honest, sometimes I get frustrated with him. In the past, it has happened before because they don't come immediately sometimes when you ask. And because we always have our own time and we want them to be right now and right this on this moment. But now that I have a certain age and I look back, I realize how everything came just in the right moment. And this has made me to trust him more because sometimes we have a lack of trust because we think we know better. <laughs> What are some of the issues in your life that you have prayed about and uh, have seen God answering you? Let's begin with the fact that I'm sitting here. Me believing in him is one of the moments that, one of the miracles in my life that I didn't even pray. I just prayed directly with, for, with him that I would like him to show him I guess I was doubtful like Thomas was. So I wanted him, I wanted concrete proof that he, proof of his existence. That was one of the prayers that was, they were answered. Another one was the way everything worked out for me to find a beautiful future wife that <laughs> hopefully this year, It's the right, the right year that we'll get married and how God works through everything and every difficult moment that we could be together. I think you, you asked God in prayer even for the nationality of your future wife, but that's, that's the story for another time, right? Yes, it is true. <laughs> wow, wonderful. By the way, prayer is that one spiritual exercise that helps us to be honest with God because you cannot pray and pretend. Mm. Prayer does not happen if you pretend. So when you're talking to God, you cannot pretend. Therefore, praying helps us to be 100% honest and true with God when we communicate with Him. Well, we have a lot of examples in the Bible. You can remember about the disciples pray, about the life of the Paul, and well, it, the pray is powerful in the life of the Christianity and for share the gospel for another countries. Guys, thank you so much. We are very excited to see you here and listening about the, your histories. But uh, we have established a tradition of the learning how to wish the people happy Sabbath in different languages. So could you teach us, I start maybe with Valentina, how you say happy Sabbath in your language? Um, yeah, well, um, because I originally come from Serbia, I was born there, but my family is Hungarian. Uh, I'm going to teach you the Hungarian version for happy Sabbath. Um, and that is Adot Sombatot. We say wow. blessed Sabbath, so Adot means blessed, and then Sombatot means Sabbath. Very nice, very nice. In Dr. Armenian, we say Urach Shapat, and the word Shapat comes from, from uh, the uh, Jewish language. Urach Shapat means happy Sabbath. 
I will right. say it in Greek. We say Kalos Sabato. Kalos Sabato in Greek. Very nice. Okay, thanks. Thanks uh, to everybody for joining and participating. And until next time, be global.